Hey people, how are you doing? So welcome to another video. And this one will be about motivation and inspiration, especially in art. Especially in art, but it can be applied to other things as well. So if you're not a, um, an artist, just keep watching and uh, you might get some tips from it, from, from inspiration and motivation. Oh, my cat is screaming. Okay, no problem. I will show you my cats on another video. That will be fun. Okay, but first subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <clears throat> Sorry. I always say this because I have a lot of content coming up and I want you to see it. So subscribe, you'll be helping me out and you will be seeing more of these videos. So, and I hope that you enjoy them. So subscribe. Okay, so now let's go into inspiration and motivation, specifically for art, specifically for art. But as I said, it can be applied to other things. So one of the thing that in my business, in the industry of art, really helps me with motivation is inspiration. So doing the things that I love. That's why I don't do commissions a lot. Sometimes I do it and put my own twist to it, but it's doing what I love. And usually how I get my inspiration, I just get these visions in my mind. And you probably do too. You just get these visions in your mind. And your job as an artist is just putting them on canvas or in a sculpture, or in a design, or something like that. That's your job. And if you keep doing what you love, putting those images that they sometimes can be dark, they can be bright, whatever it is, pay attention to your mind and pay attention to what pops up in your head. Don't just do something because somebody asked you to. Just pay attention to how your mind works, how you are feeling, how your mood is. And then those images will pop up and put them on canvas. That's your best inspiration. And when, when you have them on canvas, you will feel like you brought something from the immaterial to the material. And that is magic. For me, that is magic. You are turning something that is not tangible, that doesn't exist yet, and you are turning it into something physical. You are bringing it to life. So in my perspective, you kind of are creating life. And that's how I see my paintings. They're my children. I kind of gave them life. They were in some other realm. They came up to me and I gave them life. So that is the best way to keep your inspiration up. Do what you love and what your mind tells you to. I like to say it like it's a higher force, what that higher force tells you to do. And that's how you keep your inspiration up. And also do your research. In the things that you love to do, you know there are millions of artists out there. Everything has been done. There's no point in denying it. You might think that you are doing something completely revolutionary, but probably somebody else has done it. So research artists that uh, are kind in the same realm of your inspiration. Research their techniques. It could be ancient artists. For me, at the moment, it's Rembrandt. I've been obsessed with him. 
obsessed with Rembrandt. It used to be Leonardo da Vinci and Botticelli. That's why I do those art history videos that I'll keep doing, I promise you. I'll keep doing those art history videos. But my inspiration lately has been Rembrandt. So I've been digging into his life, digging into his technique. And that has helped me a lot. So research your artists. Keep researching your artists and that will be amazing for you. It could be contemporary artists and that will keep your inspiration up because you'll see that you are not alone. For example, I remember that when I was starting painting, I thought, nobody will want this. This is something that nobody will want it. But then I start researching it and I found that other artists were already doing something kind of similar to what I wanted to do and they were achieving much success. So it also gave me the courage to keep doing what I love to do. And that might really, really help you. So keep doing that. I'm sorry if my cat keeps screaming. She screams a lot and I can't help it. I just can't help it. But let's just keep going on. If you hear the cat, just know that she is very well fed very well taken care of. She just likes to scream randomly. Nothing I can do. Okay, so keep re researching those artists. Keep, if you're in a world where your inspiration kind of doesn't come to you, search new artists because your taste might have changed. Something that you have been painting for seven years you change as a person. So of course, your art should change with you. If you're feeling low, you might produce a different kind of art than from when you were feeling happy. So embrace it. Sometimes you don't need to be doing the same thing. Just embrace the way that you feel. And uh, also those inspirations, your inspirations might change. Like I told you, mine did change a lot. And you can still keep your style. You can still keep your particular vision, but you can kind of mix new things out, new techniques that will even make it better. And that's what I feel. You grow as a person. Your art should grow with you. So that's what I have on an inspiration. Now, motivation is a different thing. Sometimes you get the inspiration to do something, but it takes a lot of work. Painting and sculpting and all of that takes a lot of work. So sometimes you get the inspiration but you don't feel the energy to do it. I know that. I know that firsthand. And there are some techniques that are very complicated. There are some techniques that it takes a month to do a painting. You don't need to do that. You absolutely don't need to do that. There are easier ways and easier techniques. So motivation. Make it as easy for you as you can. Have your materials in one place. Have your canvas ready. Have canvases on storage or stone on storage. Make your life easier. If your technique is being too difficult and painful for you, change it. You don't need to change it completely, but find ways to get shortcuts and to make your life easy. Because painting should be enjoyable. Art should be enjoyable. 
It shouldn't be something painful. So in terms of motivation, try to make creating art as enjoyable as you can. Listen to an audiobook, listen to music that you like, listen to something, a documentary. For me, it works a lot motivational speaking, especially Bob Proctor. He died recently and I really wanted to meet him. I really wanted to meet him in person and I never got the chance to, but he did change my life and uh, I'm very sad that he died. But life goes on and there are other motivational speakers that I still have the goal to meet. Okay, but change your process, keep your materials handy, keep everything that you can do and do it every day. You are a professional artist, do it every day. Even if you're not a professional artist, if you have a job, but you are creating art for pleasure, just try and do it every day, create that habit. Because you know, if you create a habit, it just becomes natural. So you don't need to paint for 10 hours every day. You can just paint one hour. I know that cleaning brushes is very annoying and sometimes you don't want to dirty it, dirty the brushes up, but as I told you, there are techniques for that. So to clean your brushes, just wipe them out with a, a kitchen towel and dip them in Vaseline. Then just store them. You don't need to wash them with soap or anything. The next day, just wipe them out with another kitchen towel and they'll be perfect. Another day, another thing with your palette, you don't need to clean your palette. You can just put aluminum foil on it, mix your paints, and when you're done, just throw the aluminum foil away. Just make your life easier. Make painting easy for you because it should be it should be inspiring and it should be a good moment you're creating something you're creating something important so you should be happy while you're doing that of course it's always a stressful moment you're creating you want it to be the best that you can you will feel anxiety sometimes you will feel frustration sometimes but it needs to be a period where the technique doesn't get in the way of the process uh, let me try to rephrase this the technique doesn't get in the way of creating your art. So that is for motivation and also for motivation, watch documentaries, watch the life of artists, watch their daily routines. And of course, motivation always comes a little bit from success. The more successful you become, the more motivated you are. So watch my previous video on uh, the art business and how to make yourself more noticeable and more successful. Because feedback is also important. If people enjoy your art, if people keep telling you, so if you leave me comments, leave me positive ones because I must tell you, I disregard the negative ones. I don't pay attention to them. And most of the times I deleted them. So it's pointless. Just leave me positive comments. Tell me what motivates you and what inspires you because it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. And I would love, love, love to know what each and every single one of you uses to inspire and motivate you. Because I told you my version, now I wanna hear yours. 
Okay, so subscribe. Don't forget, subscribe so that you keep seeing these videos all the time. <laughs> and I will have a lot of other tips for you. Techniques. So I haven't been doing a lot of painting tutorials. I haven't been doing a lot of that because I feel like I did already a lot of them. If you search my channel, it's full of them. It's full of them and it ends up always being the same thing. There are some new techniques that I have been using. I can share them with you, but most of the time if you research my channel, there's a bunch of things there. So I think that the, these conversations that we're having right now, they are important because you don't need just to learn how to paint. You need to make it work for you. You need to evolve with your skill, but you also need to evolve with your business style. So these conversations are important. And I will have a lot of influential people talk on this channel so that you can learn more about this. And also some artists, so that successful artists. Because I absolutely despise the concept of the starving artist. So I want to show you, I want to make you aware that there is the abundant artist concept. And I want you all to be abundant artists. And that is why I'm doing these videos, because I don't want to keep you in the dark. I want to make you aware of what you can do to become successful. That's what we all want. And I don't just want success for myself. I want success for everybody because everybody is different and everybody deserves success. It's not competition. Forget about competition. Competition in my mind doesn't exist because if there are more successful people out there doing painting, being an artist. Not everybody is the same. Not everybody will do the same things that you are doing. So share your insights and help people become successful. And good things will come to you. The more you help, if you help somebody, good things will come to you. It might not be from that person that you helped, but it will just come to you. So just help people, just help them. <laughs> okay, so enough for this. Okay, subscribe, turn the notification bells, leave comments. I want to know what you think about this video and I want to know your opinions on this content. Okay, so see you on my next video and we'll have a great time. Bye.